Hello everyone and welcome back! In this new lesson we are going to learn how to use Mongoose to fetch data from our MongoDB database and return it here in this call to this REST endpoint. Now one way of doing it would be to simply inject here the Mongoose module for the courses entity and use it to query the database. However we are not going to do that, instead we are going to write all our queries for the courses entity in a separate class called a repository and we are going to name it the courses repository. The reason why we are doing that it's because any query that we might write here inside the courses controller might also be needed elsewhere in the application so we want to write the query only once and reuse the query code whenever we need it elsewhere in the application. The repository pattern is a very commonly used pattern in other frameworks, so let's see how this pattern looks like in Nest.js. We are going to start by heading over here to our courses module and here we are going to be defining a new type of service. So we are going to create here a new folder that we are going to call repositories. So this is going to contain the multiple repositories of our Nest.js module, typically one per entity. So at the end of the course, we should have here a courses repository and a lessons repository. Let's then create here a new file. We are going to call it courses.repository.ts. Now this file is a plain injectable service, just like any other. Let's go ahead and define here a new class called courses repository and let's add it the injectable decorator from nest.js. Now before implementing the code for this repository service, let's configure it here in our courses module. So here in our courses module, we are going to be using here the providers property to which we are going to assign an array and here we are going to add our courses repository service. So this way the courses module knows about the courses repository. So what type of methods do we find typically in a repository service? Well, we are going to find the typical CRUD operations for a given entity or a set of related entities. For example, our courses controller would need here a way of querying a list of courses from our MongoDB database. So we should expect to find here in the courses repository a new method called find all, for example, that would provide as a value a courses array. And let's import here the correct course class again from the shared folder. Let's annotate this method with the async keyword, meaning that we are going to be supporting in the method body the async await syntax. Now, what other type of methods should we find here in the typical repository class? We would find methods for, for example, updating an existing course, deleting a course or adding a new course. So the typical CRUD operations for this entity. Let's then in this lesson implement here find all using mongoose. For that, we are going to be injecting here via the constructor the mongoose model for the course entity. Let's define here a constructor and just like in the case of our frontend, our backend also works using dependency injection. So we are going to be able to inject here a course model service that is of type model of course. Now this model is going to be a mongoose model. So let's make sure that we import from the mongoose package the model type. So this course model service that is getting injected here has been created here by Mongoose. So whenever we configured here using for feature the course entity with the courses schema, we have implicitly created a model service specific to this entity that we are now injecting in our repository via the constructor using dependency injection, just like in the front end. Let's now have a look at what type of functionality we have available via the model. Using the model, we have multiple find operations. We can do a find here using the find method using a series of optional parameters. We can do a find by ID and we can even do things such as find and remove. We also have other methods available such as for example, update or update one, update many for modifying data. And we have all the typical CRUD functionality, such as, for example, the ability of deleting courses from the database and of creating new ones. So in the case of our find all method, what we want to do is do a call here to find. 
and because we are finding all the documents in the collection, we don't need to specify here any extra parameters. Later on in the course, we are going to show how to do a find by adding here some extra conditions. But in this case, because the Mongoose API is promise-based, we already have here a promise that emits values which are courses arrays. This means that we have completed here the implementation of our find all query method. So by injecting the courses repository anywhere on the application, we are going to be able to use this query whenever we need it without using directly the mongoose model. Now, in this case, the benefit of refactoring this query here to the find all method is not large, but in more complex complex queries with a lot of parameters, this is going to save us a lot of code. In order to be able to use the find all method in our courses controller, we're going to have to inject here in the constructor the repository. Let's then add here a constructor and we're going to create here a new member variable that we're going to call courses db and to it we are going to assign the courses repository. So with this, we have here the course repository ready to be used. So we can now use it here and call the find all method. So this is going to return a promise of course array that we can return here as the output of find all courses. We are going to explain further on in this course the exact difference between separating our logic between repository classes and controller classes. Right now, we want to go ahead and test this new implementation and confirm that the data is now indeed coming from the database as expected. Now, before trying this out, let's fix here a small problem in the implementation of our repository, which has to do with the injection here of the course model. So specifying here that this is a model of course would not be enough for the dependency injection system to identify exactly which mongoose model to inject. So besides providing here this type definition, we also need to add here a decorator called inject model. So inject model needs to be imported from nest.js slash mongoose. And we need to provide here the name of the mongoose model that we want to inject. So the dependency injection system is going to be able to determine then that it's this model here linked to the course entity using this particular schema that we want to inject here in our repository. So it's this string course that makes the link between the two things. And with this, we are now ready to test our database query. Let's then open here the terminal and from inside the REST API folder, we are going to run the command npm run server. This is going to start the server in hot reload mode. Now we are going to go ahead and open a second terminal and we're going to access the endpoint slash API slash courses, which corresponds here to our courses controller. If we do that, we are going to see here on the screen that indeed we are fetching the data from the MongoDB database as expected. So this data is no longer coming from an in-memory object that we had here in the server at the level of our courses controller. Instead, we are querying the MongoDB database and we are sending back the results to the front end. Let's now continue the implementation of our courses controller. We are going to be adding the remaining CRUD operations and we are also going to be adding common features such as, for example, input parameter validation and error handling in general.